Kudacho Dam, or as we know it now, Lake Pavan, in the north coast of KwaZulu Natal, close to Ushawi, is a 1,200 hectare dam and is true to some prize fish caught every year. The launching facilities at Kudacho is more than sufficient, but several reports were made of break ins on the vehicles, so make sure you take a security guard to look after your vehicle. This dam was built in 1980 and opened in 1982 and up to 88 meters deep in certain areas. In general having steep banks and in some areas gradual slopes. One of the first areas that looked very promising and in line with the theory we had looked like it had some staging fish sitting just off in slightly deeper water about 16 foot and my words weren't cold telling Rob there must be a female around and there you have it. Hey. Much more better. Hey, how's that? Well done, Mr. Fisher. Much more better. That's, look at that. What a beautiful two Ogamagatsu custom made uh, fluke. We need and he's fat. She is fat. 1.8? Yeah, because she's so fat. She's a bit short, but she's fat. This dam hosts the original Florida strain only, and as far as my knowledge goes, no northern strain was ever introduced, thus having no hybrids. Furthermore, this dam has many species of fish, no less than 28 different species. And to name a few, numwe, several tilapia species, even freshwater tarpon, and an abundance of bait fish was introduced, even freshwater shad from the States. standing like this is we are using the ghost spot lock best thing about the ghost and everything on this boat is that spot lock this is and we can just concentrate on fishing uh, yeah you can't put that in there if the wind was howling now we would have still stood here there yes. still. and there's fish below us and andre's convinced that they are staging and that's what put the bigger one just now another one or two years. Now this was our second trip out with a Suzuki and again confirmed everything we said to you in the last show. A real smooth and soft ride, backed up with exceptional performance and fuel efficiency. A 
lot of times you'll be fishing and as your mind wanders and you're not too caught up in trying to catch a fish, that's when they take you and catch you off guard. The chatterbait delivered again. Slapping with his own fish. <laughs> oh my word. You see, I let you hold my fish. Oh, no, no, if it wasn't for me, you would have lost it. <laughs> <laughs> A nice fatty. Look how pretty they are. Now, guys, if you watched the previous episode where I explained that very dark colors in the, in the clear water. Now, this is all colored up with muddy, muddy type water. And you see the light green light light brown colors it gets beautiful pretty it's like a almost a pearly salmon color They're ready to, to spawn, or getting ready, fattening up. Thank you. Oh, he's a, look how fat he is. She, hey? She's fat. Okay, I'm going to let her go, she's bleeding. You see, it is fashion. What? That belly, like me. Oh, yeah. And after using the complete fishing system from low range, combined with the ghost, it certainly becomes a must-have every time. Without it, a definite handicap. The 12-inch screen on the front makes it real easy to either use the back transducer or the transducer and the ghost to see real-time what's under your feet. And when you want to switch to side imaging or down imaging, you just change the source of your transducer. But those points we'll discuss in detail in episodes to come. No microphone on. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was the that's a 101 on how to cast a, a, a swim jig. <laughs> Good one. A lot of anglers used to believe that this dam will produce the next South African record bass. But unfortunately, over a couple of years, some anglers made themselves guilty to harvest bigger bass out of this dam during the spawning season. And to be a bit more specific, a handful of deep sea anglers made themselves guilty of this terrible behavior and selling the bass for fuel money to go deep sea fishing. I encourage any angler on the dam that witnessed this to please report it. It is essential that all anglers understand that that small window for bass to spawn is where they come from the deeper water for a small period of time and that ensures the future of these awesome catches. So I encourage all anglers to fish responsible and with due respect. is set in almost a bush felt arena and even have some crocodiles around so it's important to keep a watchful eye and no swimming is recommended a true taste of africa right here on our doorstep the quiet and tranquil surrounding makes just the experience of being on the dam worth the trip the year we're getting close to pre-spawn and might find some staging bass which we were hoping for the fishing was tough and we did get a bit of news from guys that were there a week prior trying what they suggested and some of our own techniques we prefer as well especially in the pre-spawn 
I find having the complete fishing system of Lorraine's handy and in certain areas where we could see fish gathering is where we spent some extra time and eventually managed to get a bite. The females are fattening up for the spawn, thus normally feeding ferociously, but we only got a few here and there. We started all fishing Texas rigs with some senkos and flukes and some creature baits and even tried some shallow cranking on a chatterbait. Not too long ago, the dam was quite empty for quite some time, allowing a lot of shrubs and bushes to grow on the shores. And with the water levels that rose, creating some great structure, but quite the challenge and obstacles to land good fish. We did lose a couple of really good fish in those brushes and managed to only land four for the day, with a combined weight of just over six kilos. All good quality fish and quite fat females at that. Personally, I feel that the Florida strain bass really puts up a good fight and Rob will confirm this. Depending on the oxygen levels in the dam, they can really be tricky to land some days on lighter gear. Hey. They're all nice little fatties. Okay. Alright guys, all nice little fatties. Took a chatter again, this is about a 1.2. Yep. And as I mentioned earlier, as soon as your mind's not too focused on the fishing side of things, you'll get another butt. Exactly what happened while we were focusing on flying the drone. To summarize the day, we found the fish close to steep drop-offs where it levels out towards the shore. Typical for pre-spawn fish. But the bite was slow and very light. And we missed several fish. Even though we only landed the four fish, this day was more than just satisfying. Okay, uh, what's the time now? It is two o'clock. We've had a uh, dry spell for a few hours, but we're persevering because there's always good fish around. But it's come up a bit, which is we're hoping is going to turn the fish on. But uh, it's just cast and cast and cast and reel and cast and uh, no fish. We've missed two little ones, but uh, big ones elude us. So we'll give it another half an hour, hour or so and if we don't we need another one for bag we have to get five fish you cannot go fishing and catch four so uh, we'll give it give it a, a little while longer being here in the heart of africa with this quiet tranquility and knowing the potential slabs that roams these waters we will be back soon thank you Khudetro and thank you to all the viewers for watching ASFN make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell notification button to be notified every time we upload a video well the last few hours was a toil we uh, got a couple of bites which we missed and that was it so it's now 10 past 3, it's a two hour drive back to Durban, so we're going to call it, but overall it was still a good day, nice to catch some quality fish. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a nice day. <laughs>